Hello to you. Um, if you're watching this video, you probably have light speed now and are a little bit overwhelmed because it's kind of like driving a race car. And what I'm going to do is I want to help people who um, have uh, decided to go to light speed. I want to help them by immediately giving them um, my layout to start with if they want it. Uh, so if you're out there and you want my layout, just go ahead and email me at the todaytrader.gmail.com and uh, I can do that for you. Basically, um, I go into my accounts here. Or actually, I'm not going to do it this way because it requires a password and I don't want your password. So what it entails <clears throat> is I will call up the Lightspeed people and they'll make a, a setting switch right there on their end. And all you have to do is log back in and you'll have my layout. And so the next time you log in, you'll be looking at something just like this. And so what I want to do here is go over... Um, a few uh, basic things to help kind of get you up and running to start with. The most critical ones would be obviously order entry and uh, keystrokes to set up your keystrokes and also I'll show you how to use this point and click module over here for those who don't want to use keystrokes. Um, and I'll go over some charting options. The charting options in Lightspeed are, are pretty basic um, but they're fast so you know for people who like a lot of analytics and like to really get a lot of information and data on each chart sometimes those things take three seconds to load and the way I trade I like to cycle through the market quickly I'm looking at a lot of stuff sometimes really quickly so um, I like to have charts that load lightning speed um, to start with I think uh, let's call your attention up here to the main header panel this shows your account number um, this shows uh, your profit and loss for the day you know, today's trading I made 556 bucks didn't document it but uh, that was my day um, and over here these two buttons are pretty crucial the P and the C the P stands for palette when you bring that up you have all these icons in which you can launch new windows for instance if I wanted to see my stats for the day I would click that and I can see how many shares I traded if I wanted to build a new watch list I would click that um, if I wanted a new chart I would go over here and click one of these charts but I don't want a chart so that's your palette you can get a lot of information off of there and let's close that and configuration is the main one C stands for configuration you have all these tabs here all these tabs have incredible amounts of options for you and any other trader that's ever given information and feedback on this thing they've pretty much uh, taken it to heed and built it so um, to start with let's look at charts uh, what I have here is a chart of my uh, two day um, and sometimes I go to three day so let's just make that the first tip right click on the chart go down to properties and you can see it is an intraday chart it is a candle chart. Intervals are five minutes. Days back is one. If I want to change that to two, we hit OK. And now I have a little bit more daily history that I can go back and scope out resistance and support lines. Uh, this thing right here, you just double click it. Double click on the left hand side. It stays with you until you turn it off by clicking it again on the left hand side. So double click to turn on, double click to turn off on the left button. Um, chart properties. Uh, we did that. Colors, if you want to change your colors, here's the background colors, the text colors, you can experiment with those. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. Studies, these are the different studies. Now what I have in here now is my um, three moving averages and here is a really important uh, thing that's happening right now with this version of Lightspeed. It may correct itself in the future but I use a 10, a 20, and a 50 period moving average. But you'll notice down here in the window it's showing 50, 100, and 250. Well, by reverse engineering, I figured out and told the guys at Lightspeed that these five minute charts are still being calculated at one minute intervals. So, in actuality, Andy and I, when he was on a different software program, we uh, matched up our, our um, data and we figured out that uh, 50 is actually a 10 period. So, you take a 10 minute, 10 period, one minute chart, but you got to times it by five because we've got five minute charts here and we get 50. So, um, oh, if that didn't confuse you, uh, if you want a 10, 20 and a 50 period moving average much like I use you're going to have to use these intervals at period 50 period 100 and period 250 basically if you divide those by 5 that's your 10 20 and 50 uh, my stochastics here again I had to do the same thing so normally these would be uh, divided by 5 but these are my periods for my stochastics I have a 25 and a 25 and again this is the D averaged and what you do is um, just click on that and uh, obviously all these settings are going to be the same for you so you don't really need to set these but if you ever wanted to change them those are the settings you have to be aware of until they get a new version out and fix that bug uh, they're calculating all of their uh, all of their indicators on a one minute which is kind of funky um, 
down here is uh, this is my daily chart, of course. Um, there's a couple of things you can do, I think, with the charts uh, with keystrokes. If you hit like page up and page down, you can kind of shrink the view, but I don't really mess with those too much. Um, up arrow and down arrow brings it in and out. And um, that's pretty much it for charts, I think. If we just go back into properties and look at anything else, the snap to window, if, if you click it like that, you have a scroll bar, which means you're not seeing the whole data. And I just, I, I never like to do my charts like that. So I have everything scroll, uh, everything crammed into one window, and that's called snap to window. That's what that means. Um, if you want to display the pre market and post market, you click on that radio button and click OK. But I don't generally use that, so I'm going to take that off. I want, oh, I'm sorry, that was left or right. That's where you would click the uh, pre market. So if you click that pre market, post market, you're going to get this information in here today's pre market, and this is today's post market. So you can always turn that on and off. You can toggle it back and forth. I will do that sometimes after hours if I'm trying to watch something. Like, for instance, I think Citigroup was supposed to have uh, something going on. No, nothing yet. So let's turn that back off because I can't look at that. It just throws me off. And we turn that off in that manner. OK, um, level two window. A lot of information going on in here. This is a very important line right here. It says tier NY3. Um, let's change this to say a NASDAQ stock. OK, it says tier NASDAQ 5. What that means is if I hit an order right now to buy, I'm automatically going to buy 500 shares. And it's going to stay that way. I can go over to Google, which is set to 2, which should be set to 1. <laughs> and then I go back to Dell, it's still at 5. If I want to trade um, um, OpenWave, Maybe I want to have that set to 1,000 shares, which would be indicated by a 1, 0. That stands for 1,000. So if I want to get 2,000 shares real quick, it's just whack, whack, and I've got 2,000. If I want to go back to Dell, I'm still set for 500 shares as my default. If I go back to Google, I'm still back to 100 shares as my default. So that's a very important uh, area for you to keep an eye on when you're sending orders. OK. Um, let's go over the. Uh, the limit bid and the limit offer. And these are the keystrokes. You're going to want to get a pen, I think, for some of these. Um, basically, I use the function keys. And the function keys from F8 and over to the right are my buy keys. The function keys from uh, F7 down to F1 are sell keys. But primarily, I use the F7 and F8 to place an order and try and add liquidity. So for instance, let's go to something real um, small here so we don't start buying Google after hours. Let's say I wanted to, um, to to bid for a thousand shares of Capstone. Well, right now, if I hit bid, we're going to default to 500 shares. Bid is Control F8. So you hold down the Control key, click F8, and that box should pop up. Green signifies you're going long here, just so you don't get confused. It's a nice little thing to have. And there's my price. There's a couple things going on in this window. Arca is the uh, network at which you're going to advertise on. Island is another one. It's another big one, and you're welcome to use those too. But my my keys are programmed to Arca. I think Arca is probably the superior ECN, especially when you want to trade in New York's, because they have a uh, a pretty good um, um, system in place for the Arca on New York. So 100 here means this is what we're advertising. Even though I'm going to be bidding for 500, I'm only going to be advertising 100. So if they hit me for 100, I'm going to refresh and still show 100. And I've got 400, 400 more behind me, but they don't know that. If I wanted to show my whole size, I could just type that in there before I send the order. And sending the order would be done with an enter. I'm not going to send the order with an enter just yet. I'm going to change the price. How do I change the price? The left arrow key down, right arrow key up. So looking at the current bid in here, 57 by 59, I'm not going to send a bid in here at uh, 57. I don't want to get hit. It's after hours, but I'll send an order for a dollar and fifty-six, and uh, now you see Arca just jumped up by five hundred shares because we're advertising five hundred, which I changed that to, and the other hundred was already there. So now we're Arca showing six hundred shares, but now I want to cancel that order and watch it disappear. Okay, that Arca level is back to one hundred shares. So that's how I send limit buys and limit sells, uh, bids and offers. The opposite is for the uh, offer. Uh, it would be control F7. You'll see it turns red. And you'll see the default in here. N5 matches the default shares in here. Now how do I change the default shares in here? Well it's basically the uh, the greater than and less than key or the period and comma right above your uh, 
alternate key in the shift space there. Um, you can change your shares that way. Or you can hit escape. And to change this number here, you do not use the keys on top of the keyboard. You have to use the keys. Um, see, if I use the keys up top, they're going to type it in the field, and we don't want that. But if I use the field keys on the keypad on the right-hand side, now I've changed to 800, 700, 500, 400. Um, so once I have that set, the way I usually execute my orders is uh, when I decide what I'm going to buy, or say I'm going to bid 800, I hit 8, Control F8, adjust my price, send Enter. And as you can see, the 800 was already set because I hit my uh, keys before I sent the order. Otherwise, let's see, it's changed to at uh, a 500. Um, I hit Control Bid, which is Control F8. <coughs> excuse me, 500. But no, I want a couple more shares. I hit the uh, the period, which is the greater than. 